The second important factor in the rate of nucleophilic substitution reactions is substrate. And to understand why the substrate affects the rate of the which pathway is going to be preferred for a given substrate, we need to look at the mechanism for the reaction. So let's consider iodoethane. And let's look at the reaction of iodoethane with hydroxide. For the SN2 reaction rate, we are looking at hydroxide ion attacking and starting to break the bond to the iodine. By approaching the carbon from the back side, proceeding with inversion configuration. Through a transition state. Before completely inverting that stereo center. substrate structure is going to affect the reaction rate, what we'd like to do is change this substrate to a secondary substrate now. how sterically large the methyl groups are relative to a hydrogen. In the top case with the iodoethane, we have just one methyl group. So the hydroxide is going to be blocked to some extent from attacking from this top zone. But the two hydrogens are putting up very little resistance for it coming in and attacking from the above. And I can illustrate that by changing the curve of the arrow to show that the hydroxide is probably not coming in directly opposite the iodine, but rather from an angle and then pushing the methyl group out of the way. It's less able to do that 
if we also have a second bulky methyl group here. So there's increased steric hindrance, there's less freedom for the hydroxide group to attack the secondary substrate. And it slows down the rate. If there were no methyl group there at all, and you were looking at just iodomethane, then there'd be no steric hindrance, and you would expect iodomethane to go significantly faster even than, that, than uh, iodomethane. So now consider what happens if we have a tertiary substrate to iodo to methyl. carbons are big and bulky. So we have these three methyl groups. And when hydroxide comes in to try to attack, It's not going to have a lot of luck. Wherever it turns, it's going to bang into a methyl group. Remember, there's free rotation about these, so these methyl groups are kind of spinning like propellers, and they're likely to hit this hydroxide and knock it out of the way. There's a great deal of steric hindrance.
that carbocation is be, going to be slightly stabilized by hyperconjugation for the notch. Understanding why the tertiary substrate is slower in the SF2 reaction rather than the primary substrate is sterics, increasing steric hindrance to the approach of the nucleophile as we go from primary to secondary to tertiary. And the key to understanding why the SF1 reaction rate is enhanced as we go from primary to secondary to tertiary is hyperconjugation. Greater hyperconjugative stability of the cation as we increase the number of adjacent CH sigma bonds that can donate part of their electron density into the empty P orbital to help stabilize that positive charge. Three hyperconjugative interactions, pretty much exclusively SN1. That's a very stable carbocation, and steric hindrance is really slowing down the SN2 reaction. Only one hyperconjugative interaction, not a very stable carbocation, and since there's no steric hindrance to approach of the nucleophile, the SN2 reaction rate is quite rapid, and the SN1 reaction can't compete. Here we have a relatively stable carbocation. We have some steric hindrance, but not so much steric hindrance as completely shut down the SN2 reaction. So whether the secondary substrate undergoes an SN1 or an SN2 reaction is going to depend on other factors rather than just the substrate structure. 